Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about simple systems. I know you guys love hearing about systems. It is so absolutely exciting. But if you're in business or looking to get into business, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy it. There is six years, hundreds of episodes, hundreds of hours of content. So if you're in business, thinking about getting into business or anything, you got tons, tons to catch up on. So go back, binge everything, and then let me know uh, what you think of it. Hopefully it doesn't suck. But if it's not your first time here and you come all the time, you've watched episodes, you listen to every episode every single Friday, and shameless plug, you order through me, then what's up? It is because of you that I get to live and eat and have heat and air conditioning (laughs) and everything else. (laughs) And shameless plug of the day, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com, so that is what I do. And I want to be your rep. I know a ton of you are um, putting your own orders in, uh, ordering online or whatever. I want to be your rep for every order. That's what I want to do. Um, All you need to do is call me or even better, text me at 862-312-2026. Be like, yo, Jersey, my cart is ready. If you're logged in, just click save this cart at your checkout screen and I can put it in instead of you and it costs you nothing extra. Nothing extra except for a text to me. And then I get credit for the sale. And we become best friends. And you become a certified cool kid. Yes. And everybody wants to be a cool kid. Don't you? Let me know. You'll get the cool kid sticker. It is a limited edition only for people who buy from me. And that's what I do. And by the way, um, like a lot of you know, once you um, do that that first time, I'll have your card info. I'll have your name, I verify address, and it literally is a text like, yo, my card is ready. I put it in, say, cool, I'll send it to 123 Fake Street. You say, yeah, man, and everything is done. Make it absolutely easy. Uh, But that is my shameless plug. So go and do that. Uh, Shameless plug number two, if you will, go to the AWC website. It's awcmag.com. Go there and get a subscription to the American Window Cleaner Magazine. It is a magazine that I purchased and edited, and there's posters and stickers. And Oh, man, the stickers are so good. Uh, if you've seen anybody with some awesome window cleaning stickers, that is why. It's because of the magazine. It comes to your door every single month. It's a real magazine, by the way. Go and get that. AWCMAG.com. Okay. The, the, the beginning part of this episode ran a little long. I'm sorry. I got into it. I got into it. This time of year, uh, I see a lot of people putting their own orders in again. Uh, people that I've done before. I'm like, man, come on, remember me? Remember me? (laughs) Anyway, today we're talking about the super exciting, um, the super exciting concept, if you will, of systems. And today we're talking simple systems. I may do other ones also. Um, Today's systems is going to be all from the um, customer all the way through. So we're doing bidding and doing and collecting and rescheduling and marketing to new customers. We're doing it all. The whole customer experience. Now, before I go and jump into that, systems in general, as boring as they are, is the absolute main focus to any company. Any company. Now, I didn't say just any self-employed person. Right, because if you just are uh, an owner occupy or an owner uh, operator, systems are really good. Still, you can. That's the whole working four hours a day instead of eight. It's because of systems, but it's not as crucial. When you jump into having crews and trucks and routes and having giant months and giant years and trying to get all of that done, systems is absolutely absolutely 100% necessary. And I have to say, most of you, um, me included, um, lack on the systems. And I'm talking almost all of you. I've not met anybody except for the 
one or two people that had their systems so dialed in that they were incredibly efficient. Most people have some kind of systems. They kind of lack on them. They kind of don't really follow them all the way, which turns it into not a system. And they're trying to figure out why they're running crazy or why they just got so much. How can everybody do this, you know? And it's systems. Systems are super boring. Super boring. I know. But if you want to talk about efficiency in your business and like getting things done and making sure that the things get done that you need to get done, man, systems. Systems. As you guys know too, I do, um, I talk to hundreds of people a week. Hundreds. And uh, almost all of them talk something about systems when we're talking. Just of like getting things done. Even if they don't know what they're called or what they're looking for, it's systems. Right? So that's what we're talking about today is we're going to go through the employee, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, job or the um, um, customer experience, the customer system. And this is where I think most people really do lack because they get there, they get so busy, they kind of forget everything. But here we go. To start, we're talking about bidding and booking. Bidding and booking is the first thing, right? We'll get to marketing. That's all stuff. People come to you. They find you. It could not even be marketing. It may just be referrals. It may be anything. But the first interaction you have with the person that's a real one-on-one touch is the bidding and the booking part. And the system has to happen this way. If you're doing in-person bids, you can do things however you want. But in my opinion, is absolutely wrong. You're spending so much time and getting zero benefit. In the grand scheme of things, even if somebody is not there and you're not talking to them, to drive there, walk around the property, to get the same bid you could do over the phone with Google Earth, to get back in your car and drive back to your office, that's 30 minutes. 30 minutes of your time to do something that could literally take one to two minutes on the phone. All you need is an address. Even if they're not there, you could do it in 30 seconds with Google Maps. Right? So the first thing is speed. Speed is the most crucial thing in the process of basically bidding and acquiring the customer. Because here's the thing, no matter how somebody comes to you, they want the job booked. Yes, we're a luxury, yes, it's everything else, but they just want it to be done. They just wanna get a good feeling, they wanna feel like they can trust you, and they just want it booked. They just want it to be over and off their plate. They'll go to the next thing. Oh man, I gotta get a window cleaner. My mother-in-law's coming. Uh, holidays are coming. Uh, spring is here. Whatever the excuse. They need to find a window cleaner. Now, how do you end their quest? How do you help them while not competing with anybody else? Everybody's so worried about what everybody else is doing and what their price is, blah, 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 blah. If somebody's called you, you have the only, you're the only person with the chance to stop that and get the customer. Because if somebody's calling you, they're not talking to anybody else. It's your choice and chance and opportunity to end it right there and get that customer. Too many people are worried about like, well, they're going to call me and they're going to call five people. Well, you didn't do it right. And here's the system. Bidding it over the phone. I want a conversation to last minimally, like a minute, two minutes. That's the optimal, right? Hey, yeah, I'm calling to uh, get a quote uh, for some window cleaning. Awesome, great, let me ask you a couple questions and I'll get you a quote right now. Oh, wow, yeah, cool. Uh, what's your address? Let me uh, look it up in the uh, satellite imagery programs. Boom, type it in. Now I'm looking at the property. I could instantly tell from the property, the size, the scope, the area, the type of windows, Right, You could tell if it's a million dollar house or a hundred thousand dollar house. You could kind of see where it is. If you've been doing this for any amount of time, you probably already have a ballpark in your head. From that point though, great, cool, I have it, I see it here. Oh, beautiful house by the way. Oh, thank you. Hmm. Now let me ask you a couple of cool questions. Uh, on a nice day when you open the windows, how do you open those to get the air to come in? Do they crank open or do they slide up and down? Well, they slide up and down. Awesome. Now. If it's the first time of the year that you're doing that, do you have to slide a pane and then slide another pane up to get to the screen? So storm windows? No, no, no. Uh, we have just thermal panes, just slides right up to the screen. Awesome. And um, in your house, 
um, what type of things would I be worried about as far as uh, getting access to the windows from the inside? Well, no, nothing. You know, I got a closet window, but that's fine. I'll move the stuff and they get come. Cool, cool, cool. And let me ask you this. You probably may not remember, but when was the last time that the windows were clean? Oh, gosh, uh, probably last year, which means two or three years. But if they say, oh, I haven't been done in 15 years, it's probably been 20 years, right? All you're doing is asking simple questions to understand what really is there. And if I have questions specifically of the house I'm looking at, I would ask, right? If there's a walkout on the back, I would say that. Hey, in, in the walkout on the back, I see you have an exposed basement. Is there, uh, you know, decking or anything there that I would have to worry and contend with? Any of those little pieces I'm getting, I'm going to understand exactly what it is right away. Now, if I'm looking with an angle and I can count the windows myself, I will. If I can't count the windows, you can ask the customer to count them themselves. And go through, uh, close your eyes and just count your windows real quick uh, through your house. And let's, let's see how many you have. Now, I already know how many panes they have per window because I asked if it's a double hung or a crank out. So they go through and count it, I'll get a ballpark for it. Usually I can even see that, right? And here's the thing. When you're bidding over the phone, if I do a bid for a house and it has 20 windows and this other house has 21 or 22 windows, I could theoretically bid it about the same, right? Yes, there's a little bit of difference there. If I have them counted, I'll get a better idea. But when people are so panicked about getting the specific price, understand you just saved yourself 30 minutes to an hour, including drive time and everything else by doing this right now. They give me the information. I know what they have. I know my price. Everything there. Okay, perfect. So for inside, outside, tracks, sills, and frames, a whole king caboodle, your price is $399. Um, if you also want us to do... Um, you know, uh, gutter clean, and then I just throw on those little things, it would be these prices. If you're already up bidding or uh, upselling there, you're going to confuse people. If you upsell after, you won't confuse them because it's already a done situation. I've already found out what they like. So when I do that, I bid it, and then this is exactly how I say it. I say, Okay, great. Um, perfect. So everything there, um, your price is going to be $399. That's track sills, frames, the whole kit and caboodle. And uh, we have our first available appointment on the 28th. And that's going to be between 9 and 10 in the morning if that works for you. Otherwise, we also do have some afternoon appointments available. But uh, you're waiting until the 30th for that. Would you rather have a morning or afternoon appointment? Well, I didn't ask them anything else. I didn't give them a price and have them go. I just, oh, well, actually mornings, that would work perfectly. Let me check my calendar. Okay, well, yeah, actually I can make that work. Perfect. Well, I'm gonna get you in. Uh, you're on the calendar. It's signed. Um, we'll be there on the 27th and it will be between nine and 10 in the morning. Um, if you have any questions before that, let me know. Otherwise, when we get there, we'll greet you. We'll let you know the process and we'll go from there. Awesome, thank you. Perfect. And uh, before I let you go, is there any other services that you need us to do while we're there? We also do gutter cleaning, uh, house washing, uh, concrete cleaning, any of that stuff. All I'm doing at this point, I did ask a yes or no question, but all I'm doing is just sprinkling in the brain. A lot of times they already, everything's done. I can hang up. Uh, no, yeah, actually, you know, I think I'll be good there. Or if they really needed something else, they're like, oh, actually, yeah, what would you charge on that house for gutter cleaning? Well, if we do it while we're there, it'll save you some money. We could actually get that done for another $1.99 on the gutters. Now, we scoop, bag, and remove all that debris, take it with us, no stinky gutter muck left for you. Then we'll do the windows. We'll make sure everything's uh, good to go, and then we will be out of your hair. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah, let's do that. Okay. So not only... Over the phone, did I stop them from calling anybody else? Because they've already booked it. It's done. I, all they had to do is pick a date. They didn't even have to tell me yes or no, right? The yes or no is the part that's hard, right? Ugh, okay, do I say yes? Do I say, well, I'm going to say no as a default. I didn't even ask yes or no on the date, on the time. I just said which one's better. There's only two options, morning or afternoon. I'm the service person. I'm not going to ask so many questions that they could be unconfident. I'm going to say, do you want this or this? And they go, that. Oh, great. Done. Now, here's the part that everybody always forgets. This is the absolute amazing 
If you want to increase business, if you want to do something bigger and better than you have ever before, I always say the number one thing is answer your phone. That changes everything. Answer every call. But the other thing is doing internet, over the internet bidding, instant bidding. This whole conversation we just did, it's taken a couple minutes for me to explain it, but for the customer, it's been literally a minute. It's been literally a minute and 30 seconds. They talked to me. They knew I was professional because my spiel was down pat. They could feel my confidence. They could hear my confidence. Awesome. Everything I need to know, done. Done. They've already done some research to call us. That's why they're calling you. You don't need to sell them. Don't tell them what you do. Don't tell them how you do. Don't tell them anything. They've figured that. If they have those questions, they'll ask. But what they're doing is saying, hey, I want this. Can you do it? Yes, here's the times and dates. Do it. That stops everything. They will not call someone else. They just won't, right? It's done. It's like Home Advisor. You know, people always talk about Home Advisor, Angie. You know, oh, they don't work. It's because you're not fast enough. If I get something that says, hey, a new lead just came in, I call them instantly. I'm the first person to call them. It's done. Those other five people they sent the lead to can't get through. 99% of the time, it's done. They're not going to say, well, thanks for all the information, but I'm going to call a bunch of people. Well, if they do that, then something didn't get conveyed right. They're not confident in their decision. They're just not confident in their decision. Awesome. Definitely. Well, let me know what it is. I'll check back with you and we'll, uh, we'll get you in the schedule. And the date will probably change, but we'll go through it again. Not a problem. Awesome. I'm going to follow up with them. I'm going to follow up with them literally in four hours. The next day. Hey! Just calling, we talked a few hours ago. I know you were checking around with some other window cleaning companies. I hadn't heard from you yet, so I wanted to check in with you. We still have that date available, or we have this date available now, and I wanted to get you in. Just have it be done. If they didn't call anybody, or no one called them back, they're like, yeah, you know what, let's do it. They don't want to be, they want to be done. Bidding and booking, instant, done. It ends everything else. If somebody books with you, then no one else gets it. It's your customer. You win, you win. That's the system in the first place. Have that done every single time, every single person. You should ask the address, the name, the phone number. Get their email if they want to have any type of um, um, you know, specials and things. I always collect emails, always. Emails are super, super important to be kept up with, but you can also set reminders. You can do all that email support. And then the very most important question you ask every single time is, how'd you hear of us? How'd you hear of us? Because the last thing they say is the main thing that sticks in their brain, even if they saw you a bunch of places, right? That's the first part. Once you're on site, systems are easy. You get up to the door, you do your pre-check. Hey, my name's Jersey, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, here's all your information. I hand them over my um, envelopes, got the uh, invoice and the satisfaction form and the everything in their business. I'm just gonna put two plastic gift cards in there for you. Um, that's to give to any of your friends. Now, when we're all done, I'll come back through, walk through the windows with you. And when I do, I'll take the payment from you. Uh, I can take a credit card at that time if you want. And then also you can put that satisfaction form in there. Uh, just ask some questions. Uh, if you don't want me to see, it's absolutely fine. Just seal the envelope back up when you give it back to us. And uh, that goes right to the office. You can be as honest as possible. We appreciate the feedback, no matter if it's positive or negative. It just helps us be better. Done. Every single time. The spiel is the same. The stuff is the same. The collection is the same. How many of you say, man, I got, I got $20,000 worth of outstanding people haven't paid me yet. That's not their fault. That's your fault. That is your time. You should have collected the payment. Clear instructions creates an expectation. They expect me to pay when they're done with the service. It's not, I don't just expect you to know that. I tell you it. Awesome, we're all done, I'll collect payment, and if you're paying by card, I can take it at that time too. Then there's no question, there's no weird, awkward stuff. When it comes to the end of the time, when I'm all done and I'm leaving, awesome, and I'll take that packet back from you, and uh, and how did you wanna pay for this, with a check, or did you wanna pay with a card? Uh, yeah, actually, let's do a card, perfect, let me get that pulled up for you. You're doing it all on your phone, taking the card, done, done. I'm not spending any more time collecting from that person, I've created the experience. That's your on-site system. Has to happen that way every single time. Now, 
The customer experience is not over yet for that time. You've done the bidding, you've done the booking, awesome, they got a great feel, you were there, you were so awesome, you, you did great work, the crews were super nice, they took their shoes off, I can't believe it, the experience is there, oh my gosh, it's, it's so great, the windows look amazing, ah, so awesome. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. So one last question. Um, the next service, did you want to do that in three months or would you rather wait for six months? That'll get you to, you know, uh, November 7th. Uh, we can do a morning appointment again or we can do that afternoon. Uh, morning appointment if they're doing morning or afternoon. That'll get you to November 7th. There is no better time for that customer to rebook than right then and there. This is called the dentist close. Now, I've talked about this a thousand times. When you go to the dentist, no one ever is like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this stupid dentist just gave me a, a, a six month appointment. It was genius. They do it every six months. The doctor doesn't do that. Nobody else has ever done that like the dentist. The dentist not only gives you a toothbrush and floss you're going to throw away, but they gave you another appointment. No one's ever questioned it because they go, wow, yeah, well, I need to have this done and I'll keep my teeth. An oil change place does not book your appointment. They leave it in your hands. Hopefully you call us back. Everybody does that. Everyone does that. Why not take it into your, your hands? They're so excited. You just did the most great thing. The experience is there. It's still warm and fuzzy. They're looking at the windows. Oh my gosh, this is so great. They're on cloud nine. Never in the process are they more happy and excited from the process than right at that second. Of course they're going to book. Your confidence, and this is how we do it? Absolutely. Ah, oh, you know what? Three months seems a little bit... Actually, i got a picnic. Let's do three months. Or, um, yeah, you know what? Let's do six months. Uh, that way it's spring and fall. What if you're rescheduling 90% of your customers right then and there? If you're not talking about repeat work as being part of your system, a part of your guy's system, your employee systems, your operations officer systems, your crew chief systems, you're absolutely running uphill. You're absolutely trying every single year. I hope I have a better year. I hope people call me. Well, I hope that people reschedule. A dentist clothes company has six months booked every six months. Think about this. You're going into, say, 2024. Now, it's a little early. I know it's summer, but just think about this. January comes. You guys are sitting around twiddling your thumbs like, oh, man, what a year. Can't wait for spring. Most of you who are not doing dentist clothes, all of you who are not doing the dentist clothes, but most of you don't do the dentist clothes yet, are sitting around going, man, I hope people call. Woo, can't wait for that phone to ring. Dude, you got nothing on the books. Yeah, people should call. You're just like hoping that business happens again. And if not, you're going to spend a lot of marketing money to make it happen. Dentist close people, they're already like, cool. Well, my season starts March. I got stuff on the books starting March and it is booked. Everybody knew, which I'm still going to do marketing. I'm still going to advertise and do all that stuff. I'm still going to bring those people in, get fill up in the other spot. Now I already know. Man, my year is already booked with the guys. I got, I got to get a new truck. It's January. You already are confident in that. Dentist clothes and repeat work should be in your systems. Absolutely should be. If you're not doing repeat work or you're scared or you're nervous or you're... I say this all the time and I'm not hating on this particular person because a lot of you say this, but I had somebody one time say to me, that, uh, yeah, I don't even send emails out. I don't contact my customers. I don't want to bug them. What? What? You're a luxury service. You make people happy. You're not bugging them. No one's ever been bugged that they're getting their windows cleaned. Unless they're like, you know, oh, one of the help is... People are excited. People are excited. You're not bugging them. When you go to a carnival, do the food trucks have lights flashing and signs and stuff all in the glass all over? They got cotton candy. Why is that? That creates excitement because of the experience. This is what we do. That's what we do. Don't bug them. You don't sell plungers. 
you're not right. A roofer doesn't follow up all the time because a roof is 30 years, right? You probably replace it after 20, but 20 years for 20 years, you're not going to contact, be contacted by the roofing company. That would be bugging you. If a year later, I'm like, Hey, if you get a new, roof, you can save money. That's bugging you. That's, that's a roof. What I'm doing, when I leave, I've made you feel so excited. When I leave, the windows are instantly starting to get dirty again. I know they'll be dirty again. I know you need to have them cleaned all the time if you want to have a beautiful, perfect view. You're not bugging anybody. Create that, that after job kind of repeat work focus. Just, I'm telling you. They already like you. They love you. They've never felt better. Get the repeat work. And the last thing's marketing. This whole process is done. Awesome. You have them in repeat, so now you know they're getting done every six months if you're doing it right. Now your job is to get more people in so you can do the bid, so you can do the job, so you can get them in every six months. It's the whole thing over again. And you said, well, how, how do I systemize marketing? It's a marketing calendar. It's marketing done on a rotation. It's having things in place to get people in. Systemize your marketing by every single job taking one photo. Every tech takes one photo. It could just be of their hand. It can be of somebody else on a ladder. It could be the truck in the front. Anything. One photo. Put their phone away. Done. They submit all that stuff to you. That's B-roll. Part of the system. They also talk to people into getting reviews. If you're not using a, a company like Nice Job, obviously... You should be. But staying vigilant, getting those reviews and following up with people. Now reviews sell more people. If you have 500 reviews, people will hire you instantly because of that. You're using that customer and how awesome and happy they are right then and there to sell more work. The B-roll footage you're putting on the website. I hope, hope you're using an SEO company to make that stuff blow up. A good SEO company will change your life. But you need to have new pictures for Facebook creating your SEO. You need to have it for ads. Maybe you're using a Facebook ads manager. Maybe you're doing all the split testing and everything else and everything's there. All your Facebook page, your Instagram, your everything has all this new content. Boom, 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 boom. And if you have a picture of even you squeegeeing one window and it's new, the algorithm loves that. Now you have content. Now you're selling to the new people. You're marketing by just putting something off. Man, awesome day to clean windows. And we love, you know, making things shine. This is nothing but it's content to put out there. Right? They all don't have to be ads. Your SEO is how people find your website. Get them curious. Now they're on your website. They know everything they need to do. They call you and guess what? The whole system's process for customers starts again. When you get somebody new, either from a referral, from marketing, from your SEO, it starts the whole process of what we just talked about all over. And now, if I can take, just think of this. If you're listening to this and you're out on the job, I know you're working, just Take one second to hear what I'm about to say. But if 90% of the people, that's 9 out of 10 people that call you, if 9 out of 10 people get into your process, into your system, they're into the dentist clothes, they're into the happiness, they're into everything six months. That means one customer will be with you for the next six months for the foreseeable future. All you have to do is fill six months worth of customers and you have an entire crew booked for potentially years. If you just get six months of customers, boom, you got to hire a whole new crew because that crew is going to do those six months of customers every six months. 
understand that idea that it just takes it just takes six months of customers to fill an entire truck and an entire crew all the way for for basically ever i mean yes people die and move and everything else but when you get into a system that's what happens now when you look at your company and go, wow Last year I did $100,000. This year I'm like doing 150. Woo, that's great. No, it's not. That's awful. Let me rephrase. It's not awful. You're doing good. It could be so much better. If you did 100,000 last year and you're doing 150,000 this year, that's growth. That's great. You got more people. But you could do could do uh, uh 200 and fifty thousand dollars if you did the systems because a hundred from the first year goes into the next year because you're doing it now every six months hypothetically if you're not doing six month cleanings hundred thousand dollars last year would technically be two hundred thousand dollars this year including the six months from last year which would have been another hundred thousand dollars this year with the new customers and your repeat work, you're doing $250,000 from 100,000 last year. People go, oh, you can't do that kind of growth. You can if you do the systems, right? There's no wrong way to do it, by the way, but I beat systems down because systems aren't fun. They're just kind of boring. But if it's something that you want to do, look into your systems. I'm telling you, it will change the way you do things. So that is this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I babbled a lot. I'm sorry. Um, a few things. If you think you got anything out of the podcast and you want to do that whole virtual high five, just be like, yo, thanks, man. I don't do Patreon. I don't do any of that stuff. But I do put orders in. And like I said, it absolutely costs you nothing for you to give me that high five of awesomeness and to become a cool kid. So my ploy to you and my shameless plug, of course, is let me put your orders in. Let me be your rep. Not only can I put orders in, but I help you with any questions, everything. Um, by the way, if you're still here listening, today's word, if you're on YouTube, put it on YouTube, but um, is uh, we'll put the dentist as today's word. If you say dentist in the comments, then I know you've watched or listened to the whole thing, and that means you're absolutely amazing. But anyway, side note, I want to be your rep. So 862-312-2026, the easiest way. If you already have stuff in your cart, once you're logged in, just click save this cart. It's in checkout and let me know. I can put it in. Otherwise, if you're busy or not even busy, you just want it to be simplified or you want me to earn it, <laughs> then just tell me. Text me be like, yo, Jersey, I need uh, you know, a 48 pack of towels, a gallon of glass gleam and um, you know, four gross of Ettore Master Rubber in 18. Sweet, let me put it in now. It's just that simple. I want to make it absolutely simple. I want to earn it, but I also want that virtual high five, man. So go ahead and do that. Let me be your rep. Uh, also, get the magazine. It's incredible. I'm telling you, nerd out. Uh, bring it, your entire company to another level, your knowledge and just your involvement in the culture and industry. Go to awcmag.com. Get a subscription. I see the subscriptions come across. Now. Like, there's shirts, stickers. You can buy old magazines. You can buy issues. You can buy whatever. It's all there on the site. Go check it out. Until next week, go out there and start your systems, please. But more importantly, be epic.